My name is Lucy Klaus Falk, and we spell it L U C I E. Next is P A U S, and finally F A L C K. Could you pronounce your last name one more time for me? Falk. 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 Yes. Yes. I feel like I'm watching Viking again. <laughs> 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 and what is your Birthday? Can I ask that? My what? Birthday. My birth. That's you mean the which birthday. year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's the eighth of May, nineteen thirty-eight. May eighth, thirty-eight. And where were you born? Oh, in a small small town on the west coast of Norway, where my father was a doctor. So what is it? The name of a uh, city? That's Sauda. S A U D A. S A U D A. I have not been there since I was half a year old, <laughs> so I know nothing about it really. Okay, and this is just a formal uh, questioning mm. to identify. But uh, Lucy, I I believe that you are not. I know that you are not. Uh, Korean War veteran, you were not there in Korea during the war, but you are here because your father served as a surgeon in Normesh, right? Mm, that's right. So that's could true. you introduce him to me and spell his name and let us talk about it. So what's, what's his name? Yeah, his name uh, was or is <laughs> Bernhard Paus. B-E-R-N-H-A-R-D. P A U S. Does he have a middle name? That he never used. So I, would, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. So Bernard Paus. Yeah, right. And what's his birthday? Do you know? Yes, I know. That was uh, November 9, 1910. Wow, 1910? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he has been, he passed away 20 years ago. 20 years ago. He was almost 90 years when he passed away. Mm. And where he was he born also in Sada? No, no, no. Where no. was he born? I'm, I'm not quite sure. You I, don't know? He grew up in Tönsberg. I don't know where he was born. Okay. He grew up in a town called Tönsberg, which is about an hour south of Oslo. Mm. And tell me about his educational background, uh, including any schools that he went through, if you remember. You ask me things that I do not know, really. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I know that he grew up in Tönsberg and went to school and high school, I suppose, as well. And then he started his medical education. Where? In Oslo. But uh, I think he was... Uh, I think he finished in 1936, his, 30, medical, 36, his medical education. Where? In Oslo. I, I mean, mean, he finished, he was a doctor. School, you mean? The yeah, univers that's the University of Oslo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he got a degree from University of Oslo in 1936, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. And what was his specialty? Well, I, I don't think he didn't have any specialty at that time. Mm -hmm. That was later. That later. Was, you know, that, that he became, you know, first a surgeon and then an orthopedic surgeon. Orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after he graduated from the University of Oslo, what did he do? You should have told me before that you were going to ask <laughs> these questions because I really do you know, I want, not I want. I like surprise. Uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't actually know everything he did during those years, but you know, they have a uh, one year that they have to go somewhere in, uh, in Norway, mm -hmm. all the medical students or all the new medical doctors have, have to, and then he was up in the middle of Norway, somewhere where he met my mother. <laughs> I know, but uh, yeah. What's her name? Brita. Brita. B-R-I-T-A. Brita Paus, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they married in 1937. And but then I think they were moving, you know, mo young doctors at that time 
had to move around very much, so I don't know actually where he was all the time. But uh, as we said, in my, May 1938, they were in Sevda. <laughs> That's when I was born. <laughs> and my next sister, she was born in Stavanger, which is also in, and that was one and a half year later. Yeah. And what did he do during the World War II? Do you know? He, yes, I, well, I don't know all the places he was, but he was working as a doctor all the time. For the military? No. No. <clears throat> no, no. He, he, he was working as a doctor. He was a young doctor, and you know, they had to get more uh, knowledge all, all the time. So they were moving around a bit, and we stayed in Oslo for some years until, until spring 44, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it was spring 44. And then we moved to Tromsø, which is north in Norway. Yeah. And, um, and they were there, yeah, the last period of World War II and some years later. And in 1947, the family moved back to Oslo and stayed in Oslo after that, but were moving around a bit in Oslo. Mm. I, By I, that time, uh, not, yeah, when we moved back to Oslo, we, I had four siblings. And number six in the family, she was born 58. Hmm. I've been to some part of uh, West Bergen and Bla Balestrand, Flom, Midal. It's a beautiful country, but I've never been to Tromsø. And how was it? Well, you know, I was 10 years old, nine, when we moved from Tromsø. Mm. <laughs> And so, and yes, I have been back, but I mean, now it's a, almost the capital city of, of the northern part of Norway. Lots of tourists going there, and uh, I think very, a very nice place, really, to live. Mm. But as I say, I was a small child, when I cannot remember very much. Started school there, yeah. So then, tell me about how your father uh, came to decide to go to Korea. Well, no, that I could not tell. I was 13 years at the time. Mm. And I, of course, I don't know why he decided, but I know that he and his, really his cousin, <laughs> that was the, um, quite uh, strange in a way, but they were surgeons, both of them, and they were asked, I think, by Red Cross to be the first ones to go out to uh, establish the um, the field hospital mm -hmm. when when the Red Cross in Norway and the authorities <clears throat> had decided that Norway was going to send the hospital, so the two two cousins <laughs> they were uh, they were uh, there together so, and I think organized a lot and uh, they were in Japan first because I think they had to buy everything from United States which was done in Japan. Of course, I don't have the whole history uh, of the beginning of, uh, of Normash, but, uh, and you know, I have his diary, but to read his diary, that's a doctor's writing, and it's very hard to read. Yeah. <laughs> very difficult to read. But uh, anyway, they were the first ones, and uh, I think they went there in April, maybe, or May. So then, 1951? 51, yes, mm -hmm. 51. And uh, then the, the, you know, the, the rest of the delegations from, uh, from Norway came, uh, when did they come? In June, I think. Maybe. They came later. I mean, the hospital opened in July. July. Mm. So he was the first two of those doctors yes. who prepared everything yes. to open up mm. and right. in July. Mm. Wow. Well, so... I think there were more people coming before <coughs> before all the all those who were going to work in the hospital there were more you know high high standing people from uh, i think maybe from the forces i'm not quite sure but from uh, the authorities in norway and from red cross because they were not doing this all by themselves all the time there were other people coming to decide could, who could make decisions and economic dispositions of course i, I don't think that uh, that my father had, um, oh, he could not decide all that. But let me ask this question. So 
Norway gov Norwegian government paid for all these things, right? Not by the United States, right? No, that's not Norway paid for it. Right, but uh, so that equipment was the American... It was, I don't know if it, if it was bought or rented in some way. Mm. I think it was American. American. I think so. But it was all paid by the Norway, Norwegian government. Yes, yes. That's very nice. Yes. And at the time, the Secretary General in the United Nations was from Norway, right? Yes, right. And his name is Trigver? Mm -hmm. Lee. E. Lee. L I E. L I E. Lee. Mm -hmm. Right. And can you tell me something about him also? No. no. But he really. encouraged. I mean, he, I mean, he had been a minister during the, the Second World War. Foreign minister, yeah. Yeah, during the Second World War and was in the, in the ministries in Norway. And uh, I think, I mean, he was the first, the first uh, secretary general in, uh, in uh, the UN. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was really passionate that Norwegians should go to help the people in well, Korea. Well, I don't um, that uh, I don't know if he exactly said something about the Norwegians, but he said that the United Nations was to uh, help uh, South Korea. Mm. And I think that, I, well, I've just been told, and we have some in the book, you know, that uh, that uh, that meant something to the Norwegian government, that uh, the UN was going to help out. And very soon, I think, they decided that it should be a medical equipment to uh, mm. be their contribution. Mm. Maybe the facts that the Norwegian uh, Secretary General in the United Nations might have been a factor for your father to decide to go to help. Maybe. It didn't... Uh, well, I couldn't tell. Okay. I couldn't tell. So he... I think he, he always, he didn't like us to... Um, to believe that it was adventure seeking that made him go. It was idealism. Mm. Mm. It's not adventure, but idea, right? Mm. To help. Mm. So he, when did he arrive in Korea and where and how? Do you know? You said that I, he was in uh, Japan in April of 1951? You know, I, it, it really, I have to look in his yes. diary. Yeah. Maybe I'll find it. But yeah. it, it's so impossible. It, it's so difficult to uh, to read, you know. His <laughs> doctor's writings are very difficult to read. Terrible. <laughs> mm. Yeah, he starts his book from um, Tokyo. Uh -huh. 17th of um, April, 51. Mm -hmm. So by then they have come to April, to Tokyo. So he was there in April 17th, yeah. right? 27th of April, that's when he starts his book. 27th, yeah. where? In Japan in, or Korea? In, in, in Tokyo. Tokyo? Mm -hmm. In Tokyo. April 27th, you said? Yes. And then, do you know when he arrived in Korea? No, I don't. Okay, we'll find yeah, it I out later. I, I'm sorry, but I... No problem. Uh, I've never thought about that, exactly the dates. Mm -hmm. mm. So how long did he stay there in Korea? He stayed there only until um, August that year. That was one month before he was going to leave. That was because his own mother had just died, which mm. was very sad. And his wife, my mother, <laughs> was uh, entered a hospital because she was quite sick with her child number mm. six. So he found he, uh, yeah, I think he asked to, to leave. leave to leave a month before he really was going to. And uh, but he was back in fifty three for half a year. So in nineteen fifty three, he went back to Korea. Yeah. And for then, how many? And then it was for six months, but I am not quite sure which month, really. I think maybe from May or something and a half a year. Oh, six months? Yeah. S stayed in Korea? 
yeah, in yeah. the hospital, in the field hospital. Mm -hmm. And then, did he went back? Did he go back to Korea again to work on the Scandinavian hospital stuff? No, no, then, no. I think they were not very much in Korea to work on it. That it was a it was a group of people in the Scandinavian countries mm. that were that were working on on the building mm -hmm. of the new hospital. Mm. And uh, I know that the Scandinavian countries, I think everybody has told you, but the Scandinavian countries um, started their discussions already in a um, while during the Korean War mm. about what to do next after the war. So tell me about, you told me about the first day of his operation was Yes. Something that you want to share with us, right? Well, in a way, yes, because I found in his diary that he writes about this young boy. I mean, he was not a military, but uh, he was a young boy. This was, I think, 27th of July. I have that, I have it written. 27 of what? July. July. July 51. That um, came severely burnt and uh, they started treating him. Uh, no, sorry, it was 18th of July, mm. 18th of July. And, and that's a 51, right? This is 51. That's, that's when the hospital uh, started taking patients. Mm -hmm. So this was the first patient. And, um, and they were treating him, of course. And I found pictures in, in his album that really shows the boy the day he came in. And then... I don't know why, and I think he didn't know why. Some of the uh, other people in the hospital sent the boy after a week or so to a hospital in Seoul. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then there is a story of uh, one of the nurses at Normash who went to Seoul and went to see that hospital and where this young boy, Park, Park when he saw her, he started, you know, crying and jumping and wanted to get into the car and go back to Normers. No. And my father said, when he heard about that, he asked the permission to bring the boy back. Oh. And then there is the story of the day that he comes back to uh, Norway. And I have translated that to English, so, I mean, you can, I cannot read the whole thing. That's a wonderful so that, story. So he came to Norway? No, no, no. He came back to Normers. Normash. He came back to Normash from another civilian hospital in, yeah, in yeah. Seoul. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they, uh, he was so happy. And then, so that is what my father you know, says in the end here. I believe we made that boy very happy today. That's in his, uh, his uh, diary. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. What a story. But it's, it's a sweet story in a way. Yes. And when you see the pictures, I don't know if you... Oh, you tell me if you want to see the pictures. And I read about the, uh, uh, the activities of Normash in Korea. Mm -hmm. And more, most of them, the treated, was American soldiers. There are also British commonwealths mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. But also another significant percentage, more than 30%, was Koreans. Yes. But what I am hearing from other veterans is that during the war, they were not permitted to treat Korean people, civilians, mm. is that right? You know, I think you have to ask, that you have to get from the veterans who were there. Mm. I, I couldn't really tell, but you, uh, at least after the war, then uh, there were many civilians, many but, Koreans. But the case of uh, Korean boy Park yeah, that was, was the, the first, first day of yeah, yeah. the operation yes. of Normash. Yes. And so it was a Korean patient. That was a Korean 13-year-old boy. 13. Mm. Wow, that's so your father has uh, authority to, to treat mm. this. To treat, yes, but uh, he had to ask permission mm -hmm. uh, from the, you know, the leadership in the hospital to get the boy back from the civilian hospital in Seoul. Yeah. yeah that... I, I think he was very, very sad when he heard about uh, that the boy had been, uh, you know, that he was not there anymore. Mm. Yeah. Um, so what was his, did he belong to American military unit or was he independent Norwegian surgeon at the time when he opened the operation? 
that I could not tell. But I think, I mean, the whole hospital was uh, was part of the Eighth Army, wasn't Eighth it? Eighth Army, yes, yeah. yes, mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so they were Norwegians mm -hmm. under American, uh, yeah, what mm. should we say, overview. Or, yeah. At the time when your father was there, how many, do you have some ideas about how, what, is, what was the scale of Normesh operation in terms of number of doctors and nurse and all other people I together? I could not tell. I tell, could not. but it's in the book, right? It's in, it's in the book, yeah, but that's for the whole period. Yes. Mm. Can you... Sh Pick up your book, the book, and could you explain about it? Show it to the camera. So hold it up to the chin. <laughs> this is my book. That's why I have all these little yes. papers. <laughs> yes. Mm. So that's a Normesh, Korea, and what is it? Korea in our hearts. Korea in mm. our hearts. Yes. And that is the subtitle of the book. Yes. Could you... Tell me when and when did you publish it, who did, and so on? Uh, after many years of work, really, the veterans uh, finally <laughs> published this in 2010. 2010? So, yeah, so it's, I mean, it's some years ago now, but it's, uh, yeah, in, it's much uh, history, but of course there could have been very much more history in, uh, if, if it was today, it might be something might be different. Well, not different, but I think more because I mean, what is here are various stories from people, from other people that you could not meet anymore. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was written by all those veterans and the doctors and so on by some, by some right? By some. Yeah. Mm. And who published it? Yeah, we did. I don't know. I mean, we means. Korean War Veterans Association? Yeah, yes, or? yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You have, it's, you have it on, I mean, you have the book in Korean also. It's published by Norwegian Korean War Veterans. Very good. And then you have uh, the version in Korean, right? Yes. Yes. Can you show that too? I don't have... It's in the bottom. Yes. This is beautiful. Mm. Uh, 우리의 가슴 속에 자리한 한국. So, Korea placed in the hearts of ours. That is the subtitle. <laughs> is that the subtitle there? Yeah, yeah. that's a beautiful. And <laughs> I think, you know, the, there are three Scandinavian countries that sent medical uh, aid teams, mm. mostly it's a Red Cross. It's uh, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. And then Germany sent uh, after the war, 1954 to 59. Really? Yeah. Mm. So they just been added to one of the other countries that participated in the Korean War. But okay. I think this is the only country in Norway that has a real good publication about the whole thing. <laughs> Maybe. That's pretty good. Maybe. And then um, added to, uh, to the Scandinavian countries. India and Italy. Italy, yes. yes had, uh, yep. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any picture that you want to show about your father in the book? Yeah, let, let's uh, look at uh, your father's page. Is there your father's page about your father? Yeah, well, I mean, he was, he, he was dead when this was published, when we made it. So it's through me and his diary and letters. You know, he wrote a letter to his grandchildren, which... which uh, Show it to me. There. So he is... Which we have in the book. This is the, the you know, the person that helped us publish. He, he really put together all the things. And so you will find this in the Korean version as well, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So... Could you show a little bit? Yeah, that's good. Uh, because of the lights, it's hard to see, but we'll take a picture later. Mm -hmm. And he was in the 38th parallel, right? The sign? Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. So, um, I don't remember when... Um, you know what? Here we have written when he was there. <laughs> I didn't realize. It, 
in the, you want, in that was from the 16th of April to uh, the 11th of September, mm -hmm. 51. Mm. And uh, from the 30th of April to uh, 1st October in 53. Yeah. Very good. And this letter is from 1993. You know, I have to go through the book to remember. <laughs> yeah. Can you read some of the letter? In Norwegian? Yeah. This, uh, is, this is in Norwegian. Okay, but can you just do a simultaneous translation? <laughs> yeah. I know you can. Uh, yes, but I mean, he says, then when North Korea attacked South Korea, United Nations decided that the UN would support South Korea. Norway was part of that decision, and I, that's my father, thought that as Norway as well had to participate. We could not uh, be satisfied with words and leave the, the handling of things to others. And then he, he says something about that Norway had been occupied during the Second World War, and uh, but they says, and what did we know about Korea? We had to we had to look at the map. <laughs> so <laughs> he did didn't know, know. No, he didn't know anything about Korea. Well, Norway did not know very much about Korea at that time. Yes, of course. Do, yeah. do you think that Korea knew anything about Norway at no, that time? No, 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 no. Here he says that he started to work uh, in the office at home to pick out people to go there. And then, as I said before, he was sent with his cousin, who was also, also a surgeon, to go there and make deals for everything, mm. as I said before. Yeah. And he says something about that they were <clears throat> near to the, to the border and got patients coming with ambulances or helicopters. And he says something about, you know, that uh, the helicopters were very simple at that time. Uh, on the outside of the cockpit, there was a, 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 a box or something uh, on each side where the wounded was put. Yeah, and then, and then you have to read the um, Korean version to, uh, mm -hmm. to get the rest of the letter. But uh, he thought that his grandchildren should know about uh, what, he had, what that happened during So that's time. the letter that he wrote from Korea to his grandchildren? No, no, no. That, this was much later. This much was later? In, yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't yeah. have any grandchildren when he was in Korea. That's what but I was thinking. He had only had <laughs> children. <laughs> but he has six children, you know, and we all have four children, except yeah. for the last one who has three. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. So he had a lot of grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Yes. Were you able to talk with him about his experience in Korea as a surgeon when, did, while you were growing up? We, no, we did not. We did not. We did not. I'm sure I could have been able to do it if, if we had wanted. Mm -hmm. But you know how children are. They uh, have enough with their own things. Right. And, uh, we, and, and what is happening today with the family, it's much more that, you know, than to ask yeah, history. That's... It was much later, really, that I started yeah, getting into the system. For, uh, to go. Tell me about it, why you were beginning to pay attention to that and how? Mm. When was it? Tell me about those things. Okay, yeah. As we talked about before, the, the Scandinavian countries came together to uh, decide what to do with medical service. Uh, and they ended up by, by uh, deciding on uh, Hospital, uh, National Medical Center, mm -hmm. that was built in Seoul and which was meant to specialize, as far as I know them, specialize doctors, doctors who were already medical doctors, and they had a school for nurses, a nursing school, that, so that was from the beginning. And uh, this open uh, was launched in I think yeah, it was the 2nd of October, if I'm not wrong, in 1958. But all the Scandinavians were there a long time before uh, October. And then, you know, I was a young girl at the time, had finished high school, had one year in university, did not exactly know what to do. 
So he said I could come with him to Korea, which I did from August uh, 58 to um, about September 59. So I was there for one year. Wow, yes. so how, who did it fund it? Well, it, it was, I mean, it, uh, the, uh, let us say the, the dependents who were there, I mean, there were more, more than me, I mean, there were some wives. Well, I think not many, not many, not many grown-up children, but some wives, and they all got something to do, and we, and we had a pay. I don't remember exactly what. Everybody had the same, same pay. So you were so intern. Was, yeah, in a way, mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way. But I was the mailman. I went to the PX with the American soldiers every day to pick up the mail, and to get the mail back to uh, National Medical Center. And uh, also, they, um, uh, they asked me to, to take care of the medical library. Well, I was 20 years old. I did not know anything about libraries. But <laughs> they had a committee, of course, to um, say something you know, about books and literature. But um, I got the, um, the workers to make uh, all kinds of you know, shelves and things that they had. It was a big room. And uh, so, for some time, I was um, a kind of librarian and mm. mailman, or mail woman. Mm -hmm. mm. So you actually work mostly in the library, sorting yeah. out and working on the books. Yes. On and I don't remember very much about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as I said, the mail. You know, the mail is important when you are in another country. And in that period. As far as I remember, the mail went to uh, United States military mm -hmm. forces. <laughs> so it took some time to get from Norway to, um, to Seoul and, and back again. So that was you right after you graduated from high school and before it, it you going one, to... One year after. One year after. One year after. And mm -hmm. were you in the university? No. Yeah, I did for you one were? year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so... Before you go to Korea. The university in Oslo, before yeah. I went to Korea. Mm. And what were you studying at the time in the University of Oslo? That was just, you know... The freshman year? Well, we could go with that. It's very hard to, to compare, really, because, I mean, we had... I thought maybe that I would be going to study languages, and then we had to take Latin and, you know, some various things, which I did for one year. But uh, while I was in Korea <laughs> and, uh, and met the, um, the, the physiotherapists who were there, one Swedish and one Danish, I found out that this is what I'm going to do. Oh. So, so um, we wrote back home to the school in Oslo to ask whether uh, serving in the hospital before getting into that uh, physiotherapy school at that time, mm -hmm. you had to have experience from a hospital. So they said, okay. It was perfect. So, the <laughs> so the last three months I was there, I was, you know, washing patients and uh, being on the, on the wards of the hospital. And then I went back home and started school. Before you left for Korea, mm -hmm. did you know anything about Korea? No. You didn't? No. Uh, you didn't learn anything about Korea from high school? No, not in high school. Not in high school? No, no. So, I mean, the only thing I knew was, of course, I mean, then my father had told something from his uh, years in uh, Korea. And we had met people <coughs> who were in this planning committee. They came to Oslo and they were here and there. So we had met some of the people. So, of course, I think I knew more than many of my um, student comrades at the time. Mm. So you went there in 1958, mm. and after that, have you been back to Korea? Yes. How many times and when? Oops. I was there in 2001, and uh, then we were in uh, 2008 and 2010. Yeah. Mm. So three times? Yes, right. Okay. So. Even though you are not a Korean War veteran, your father was, your father was the architect of the Normash and surgeon. You were there in 1958, and then you've been back to Korea 2001, 2008, 2010, three times. Mm. Last time when you were there in 2010, 
I think you can tell me from the civilian perspective and eye about the changes that have been made since 2000, now 1958 to 21st century. Mm. Tell me in details what you see and how you saw it about the country in 1958 and 2010. Well, well 2000, yeah. I mean, even in 2001, it was a different country. But in 58, it was still a, a war-ridden, war-ridden uh, country, you know, with shacks and uh, no paved streets. Uh, well, I, I suppose they were paved streets here and there, but uh, but uh, it was a poor country. Fifty-eight, it was a poor country. I think really I could. Uh, you were in Seoul, right? I was in Seoul. Yes. So mm. everybody, the Korean War veterans I'm interviewing, more than thousand Korean War veterans, saying that it was just flat, or completely destroyed, and yeah. things like that. There were what there have been. Do you think it's been? change made since the war and 58 when you were there? Well, I mean, yeah, there, uh, of course there were, well, I could not tell, of course, but it was not completely destroyed then, but there were, you know, shacks built, built by building materials and things. Uh, I think very, very much so that, but also, I mean, there were private housing uh, around, people, people did live there. So, uh, I mean, this was five years after the war. <laughs> so, so it should have changed, but then to come back in two thousand and one, that was the big difference. Uh, I mean that you, know, you see this uh, this uh, fantastic uh, evolution <laughs> that had been in uh, Korea. Um, later on, again, that was um, it was more and more traffic, <laughs> like all other big cities in the, in uh, the world, but. Um, I think it has been amazing how a country has been able to develop and rise out of out of the ashes, mm. which I mean I mean you know more than I do what has happened in uh, in Korea, and um, you know often when we have kind of meetings and things now I I uh, <clears throat> I always tell people, don't forget what started our communication, in Norway, started our communication with, uh, with Korea. That was the Korean War, that was Normash. After that, Norway got to know Korea more, not everybody, but many. And even now, people ask me, are you talking about North or South Korea? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but, but then in Norway, you know, this after the war, it started the um, uh, yeah, to know Korea and get so many children from Korea to Norway. Yes. If I am not wrong, I think really that Norway has, and I mean that Korea is the um, has most adopted children. It's, it's the biggest group of adopted children in Norway. About six thousand Korean adoptees. Yeah. Mm, yes. Yes. And so many have made uh, careers in Norway, and we know about them. Mm. It's a and very names. rewarding stories. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. <sighs> so uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if Korea knows more about Norway today than uh, they did uh, before '51 or '50. Maybe they do. Maybe not. But of course, now I mean, people in Korea as well. They travel. They do travel. They come, they go to, uh, I mean, like you, they are tourists. They go to places. Yeah, they yeah. love the mm, country. And they, yeah. And, uh, and that, of course, makes Korea, no, I mean, Norway, more known in Korea. Mm -hmm. And also, in the beginning, there was not a, there, there was not a Norwegian embassy in uh, Korea. It, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> we just celebrate 60th anniversary. Yeah, of yeah. diplomatic relations. Yes. But of course, I mean, Tokyo, Japan had the um, responsibility for um, Korea as well, the Norwegian embassy in, uh, in Tokyo. So, uh, yeah. In the, maybe I should, because that was a nice picture, uh, in 2010, the, um, 
the ministry or what do you call it? Our Patriots and yeah. public you affairs. Know, they have the revisit tours and they really uh, accepted that we could be very many veterans from Norway to go at that time. Mostly they say only two a year, but then we were, we were seven or eight or something, and five of us brought grandchildren. I don't know if you can see this, but this is... Yes. Yeah. This, this was in, uh, in Busan, I think. Yes. Mm. That's what we need. Uh, we need a generational conversation and dialogue mm -hmm. about, about the role played by the Norwegian Korean War veterans, the doctors, nurses, guardsmen, and all other people together. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are trying to do. My foundation just published the book there in the... Under the Korean version, there is another yeah. book. Can you pick it up? And yes, the, the bottom one, yes. Mm. Yes, that's the Korean War and its legacy, teaching about Korea through inquiry. And that's what my foundation published in the United States. And the content is the actual analysis, based on the analysis of the interviews that my foundation has, about 1,300 teachers actually listening every day. Mm -hmm. 10 teachers are listening every day of all those veterans interview. Mostly it's an American case. And they provide this raw data to the writers, who are the teachers, actually yes. history teachers. And they wrote this for elementary, middle, and high school teachers. There are three lesson plans in each elementary mm -hmm. and middle and high school, so a total nine. And then there is a primary and secondary resources, all based on the interviews. Mm -hmm. It's not from the, another history book, but it's all from the real direct witness of the veterans about their mm. experience in the Korean War. Mm. And that we published it with the biggest uh, History Teachers Association in the United States, which is National Council for Social Studies. Mm. And the works that you've been doing with all other veterans and about your father, I think that can be the basic material for us to be able to publish something like what we published in the United States. Mm so that teachers can look at this lesson plan and it's ready to teach. And everything else is available from the website. Mm. And so I did three interviews yesterday. Mm -hmm. We are going to do another three, and then we're going to do two more. Mm. If we can do more, I will come back. <laughs> but we can analyze those and then put together with the books that you published and then write it as a lesson plan. Mm that can you know, really encourage the history teachers here in Norway mm -hmm. to talk more about those things. What do you think about that idea? Yeah, well, I think it's a good idea. And uh, I think that there is something we have forgotten to talk about, and that is that it was made um, a movie that was shown on the television. That was also in 2010, I think. And, uh, yeah, I, mean, I have copies at home, but uh, that's with um, that's a, it's a lot of interviews with many veterans who, unfortunately, I have passed away now. But um, is that the documentary for Normesh? Yes. So we w we would like to have a copy of that if I can. But I only have with Norwegian uh, with Norwegian tech. You know, there's somebody talking, <laughs> somebody talking, and that's Norwegian. I have only one English, and I'm not going to give that away. <laughs> I keep it, but I've, I really forgot that I can, uh, because of course we could have seen it here. We can make a copy of it and mm. we can put it on the website, okay? But I can, um, we are going to meet later today. Yeah. And I will drop by at home, I'll see if I can. Uh, mm -hmm. And there is a so-called Norwegian Historical Association here. Is it? Yeah, and <laughs> I, I, you know, the Korean Embassy in Norway arranged the, uh, introduced me to the chairman of that, mm -hmm. Thomas Hagen. And so we are trying to work together with that association. And so if you and the Historical Association, Korean Embassy and my foundation can work together and select the writers from the high school 
it has to be written by the high school teachers because they know what to teach and how to teach. Mm -hmm. And they, they understand the students, right? So that's what we want to do. I don't know about this um, movie that I talked about. It was, uh, it was made by the Ministry of Defense, I suppose, if we give it away like this, we have to, uh, I just have to find out. We have to ask somebody yeah. if it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a publicly available, I think, should be. So let's talk about we that can, later. Yeah, we cannot find it on the... Um, yes. On the, mm. Any other story that you want to share with us about your father's experience as a surgeon in Normish? Anything that he talked to you or anything that you still remember? No, actually not. Not? No. How was it to be an intern in the country? You didn't know much about it, but your father actually served. That was funny. I mean, they, I, I, as I say, I was 20 years, 21, and uh, I had a very nice time. I knew some Korean students, I knew Americans, and uh, we were, go, you know, seeing Korea. Everything was not uh, poor, and uh, at that time we went out in, the, in you know, various parts of the country to, yeah, to see uh, other, other parts. Of what did you like mostly in, when you were there in 1958 about Korea? Or what did you hate? <laughs> I didn't hate anything. No, I, I think, I mean, it was just a great experience for a young uh, girl. To, uh, to be there, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, yeah, in all ways, with, with all, all kinds of things that was uh, happening. Mm -hmm. So, 58 and then 2010, did that make you think differently about Korea or think differently about your father or anything else? No, no, it's, uh, <coughs> you know, I, I began working with the veterans, let's say that, uh, uh, 1980 to 90, some, some, because I mean they had the veterans had their organization in uh, in Norway, and they used to have the meetings and I started helping out, helping my father to be there and you know organize and and so and as time went by, I got into the um, to the board of the veterans. And I've been there ever since. <laughs> been on the board ever since. When did you, I mean, please tell me about the Friendship Association. Yeah. What is the exact title of it? And when did you uh, establish it? What, what do they do? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, the veterans, of course, they knew that uh, this association, uh, the veterans, they will not uh, exist forever. So for many years, really, uh, there were talks on what do we do next and can we make a sort of umbrella organization of, of people who work with Korea in Oslo. But then uh, the ambassador at the time, which was ambassador... Choi? Yes, he, uh, he's in the middle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the middle of the low row. <laughs> the, yeah. the lower row. Uh, Ambassador Choi, he was very eager, you know, to uh, organize a, a friendship association. So together, the veterans and amb the ambassador uh, worked on this, and uh, the Norwegian-Korean Friendship Association was launched in September 2009. So we have just had our 10 years birthday. Korean Association, when? Cor no, Cor Norwegian Korean <laughs> yeah. Friendship Association. Yeah, right. Yeah. When was it? 2000, September 2009. What do you mean, 2006 and 9? No, not 6, 2009. 9. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what do they do? I mean, what do you do? Yeah, we try to make uh, interesting membership uh, meetings. We have. Uh, we have been to a museum and seen old uh, Asian uh, artworks. We have had uh, people who uh, give uh, information on the situation between North and South Korea. Yeah. And we have had people talking about 
Korean literature membership meetings. We try to have at least one each season. I mean, it's not very much that we do, but we do that and we have a, a taste of Korea, food making courses. People are crazy about that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there are always too many people <laughs> signing up for that kind. So we are going to have one in the end of November. November? Yeah. What are, what are the favorites of Korean food for Norwegians? Do they, do they eat think, kimchi? Do yes, they... many, many people do. Many do. Not, not everybody. And bulgogi, of course. I mean, Norwegians, they love fish, you know, the seafood, no, but right? I think, so... I think that bulgogi is uh, more of a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> bulgogi and japchae? Yeah. Thin noodle? I don't know what that is. Mm. Oh. Yeah. I don't know all the names, really. I, I mean, I know the taste, but not all the names. But anyway, then we have people who organize uh, uh, food making course, and then uh, every year we have a, what we call a social event where people can meet and come, come yeah. and uh, get Korean food and uh, yeah, be together. And they, that's very well. People come by a hundred. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I read about it and I found that most of them social and cultural, and it can, it can be educational, but. Well, I mean, the most important thing is that we need to transfer this whole legacy thing to our younger generation if we can mm -hmm. and if we want to. And that's where the, my foundation's focus is concentrating. Mm -hmm. So we want to put all these things together, everything already done, mostly documentary and books in two languages. We can put it together and adding one more function to the Friendship Association as educational. What do you think about that? Well, <laughs> I'm not quite sure really that um, that would work out in uh, Norway. I mean, we can have a membership meeting. Yeah, how many members do you have? 600. But 600. You know, but you know... Are they, they all they, they descendant? No, people don't pay. So I think if we started to have a fee to be a member, we would not have that many. I know. Mm. No, 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 what I'm saying is, are they all descendants of Korean War veterans? No. No? No, not at all. No, no, no. Now, this is open for all kinds of people. It's uh, very many Korean adoptees, ah. people who are, I mean, uh, let's say ordinary Norwegians who have been working in Korea, Koreans who, have, who are working in Norway, people who are married to Koreans, and yeah, very many. Cool. Uh, you know, I, I always like to, to, uh, to say the, um, the, the combination or the people that I have on my board in the, in the Friendship Association. First there's me. I, I'm really, I'm a veteran's daughter. Mm -hmm. Then we have one. He is, let's say, court, <laughs> court uh, Korean. Mm -hmm. And you will meet his grandfather tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's Finn Bakke. Because Finn, he married a Korean. So, uh, uh, so that is one. Uh, me, um, veteran descendant, he, uh, court Korean. Then we have the lady who was uh, a secretary to Mrs. To Mrs. Uh, Ambassador Choi at that time. And then there is um, one lady who is uh, Korean adopted. And we have one father who has four adopted children and one young lady who is now studying medicine but who loved Korea so much while she was in high school that she spent uh, one year in Korea and speaks Korean. So I think that we have so many different kinds of people who are members of the uh, Friendship Association. That's but good. It's, yeah, it's very interesting yeah. but because I mean, it, it's because of interest. But, uh, that uh, they are on the board. But, uh, anyway. Mm. So we are, my foundation is trying to set up a task force with the educational, I mean, historical association, mm -hmm. inviting history teachers who are interested in about Korea. And we can write about the lesson plan and primary and secondary resources about what Normesh did in 1952 to 50... 51. 51 to 54, Four. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's mm -hmm. what we are trying to do, and I will let you know if we have any progress we are yes. making. Okay? And as I say, that movie that I talked about, I mean, we had that on one membership meeting to show it, and uh, everybody says, why, 
you know, that I saw the movie. Why don't they talk more about this uh, in school? Yeah. The school children. Why not? Yeah. Well, it's the forgotten war, isn't it? Exactly. Mm. Why? Why is it has to be forgotten? But if you know, even World War Two is much less now in in yeah. school documents than uh, than it was some years ago. So, so the years go by and things disappear in a way. But there are many, many, many wonderful stories that we can mm. still talk about mm. if we want to do it. And we are ready. My foundation is ready. As we already published two curriculum books in the United States. Yes. And we already signed the contract with the United Kingdom. Yep. So we're going to have another book from United Kingdom, not American experience, but British experience. Nice. Mm. And we are working with the Danish. So they're going to write about Utlantia, yes. hospital ship. Yes, yes. I think we can put together Norway, Sweden, and Denmark together as a Scandinavian, you know, mm. expedition to, mm. to so Korea. So many different, I mean, so yeah, much it's different, a different uh, yeah. experience yeah. Mm, with so three countries. One book can talk about Norway, Sweden, Denmark, mm. independent of each other, but it's a Scandinavian, mm. or we can have a Completely independent. Then, then the interesting thing is that the three countries came together during the war. To, during the war. During, that was during the war. It started already during the war. That's a very important point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I think. And they, they made the National Medical Center for Korea in 1958, right? I think, you know, the things from my father here, that, that is in English, but I think also that um, they will find everything about doctors and dentists and everything. That um, there is one. The history of Normers is here. No, no, no. Of National Medical Center is here as well. That was. Um, Yeah, he, that was the last, um, the last uh, talk that my father uh, did, had, before he died. Mm. So I, I took it. This is... Yes. And you'll find it in the Korean version. He has written about the start of the um, National Medical Center. Yes. And the people that you see here, can you see? Yeah. That's him, up there, the first. Here's uh, the Bernard. Orthopedic. Yeah. This is from the orthopedic department in I 2008. Mm -hmm. And we had to, I had to meet the people, you know. And so that is me and my granddaughter. Uh -huh. And the head of department and the chief. I don't remember who is who. I think he's the head of the department. So these are the orthopedic doctors. What a wonderful <laughs> story. Yeah. But right? Uh, Yep. National Medical Centers was established by this. He says it, it, it goes back, the idea goes back to Monday, 20th of August, 1951. Then they started to talk about it. So you have the story here. You have, you have the story of uh, Normash. That's also written by my father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So that's what I think need to be learned mm. in the school about, mm. you know, mm. what Norway did for mm. Korea mm. long time ago. Mm. You know, we, we give it, I mean, we still have some books. We give it out as much as we can to people. Mm. But the school children are not very interested. That country that your father saw and you saw in 1958, now 11th largest economy in the world. Yeah. Can you believe that? No, no. It's amazing. That's what I say. It is very amazing. Mm. But you are not living there. <laughs> and also, it's not just about the economic power. Mm. They are the most substantive democracy in Asia. Mm. You know that we put two presidents into the prisons with the candlelight demonstrations few years ago. Mm, mm, that's true. Yeah. <gasps> so that's the thing that came out of the Korea. Two million civilians and military soldiers, mm -hmm. both North and South Koreans, mm -hmm. killed, died, and wounded. And so many UN forces actually sacrificed themselves. Mm -hmm. 
It was one of the poorest country in the world at the time. Yes. You saw it, right? Mm, right. Now it's the 11th largest economy in the world. Yeah, it's amazing. It is amazing, really. Lucy, we got to talk about this. <laughs> yes, that's what we are doing, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I want to follow up. I want to follow up about this. Mm. And so that, you know, obviously I'm Korean and, you know, it's a kind of nationalistic or chauvinistic, but I think there are something real value coming out of this Korean war, telling every day still never been replaced by the peace treaty. It's so ridiculous, actually, mm -hmm. that 70th anniversary mm -hmm. without peace treaty. Mm -hmm. But still, that tells the amazing stories mm -hmm. about South Korean economy, democracy. Right. But there are still North Korea up there and superpowers around yeah. it, China, Russia, yeah. Japan, and the United States yeah. still do not want to change the status quo mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But it's always telling some stories. And I think it needs to be talked in the classroom. Mm, yeah. Yes. You know, uh, well, I have been to Palman Chom a couple of times, but in uh, 2001, when we were there, we were leaving Norway, I think, two days after 9-11 in the United States. And I remember I was so worried, you know, that people would withdraw and not want it to go. Yeah. But they did. The whole group did. Mm. So, but then, we could, then when we came to Korea, then we had in our plans to go to Panmunjom, but of course, then we couldn't. That was uh, just a week after 9-11 or something. Mm. Korea has been like that since 1950, mm. still divided mm. by the communist and, and free capitalism and democracy. And it feels like, I mean, what did wrong Korea do during the World War II. We are not the power, Axis power. We didn't do anything wrong. We didn't invade anybody. But Stalin and Kim Il Sung and Mao Zedong. We were divided. So it's like a, to me, it's like a Greek myth, Prometheus. You know, <laughs> this Stalin and Kim Jong Il, Mao Zedong stole the fire of communism from Zeus and spread it, and <laughs> South Koreans are still paying the price. I never thought about it that way. <laughs> mm. yep. I'm writing a book about it, oh, and yeah. I feel like Korean, South Koreans are like a Prometheus. <laughs> and it's not exactly applicable, but we are still, the Koreans are still suffering from this yes. Cold War ideology. Mm. So that's what we are trying to do. Um, Anything else about you want to share on the Normesh operations? How many? No. Do you, mm. Anything that you want to talk about more about your father? Oh, let me ask this question. Yeah. So tell me now, you were <laughs> growing up and not knowing much about what your father and Normesh did, but now you know. Yes. You are the leader here. So from all this. Um, you know, I'm, not, looking, I'm not the leader of the veterans. Looking back all those years, what kind of person your father was? Can you tell me? <laughs> That's very hard to describe one, one's own father. I mean, he was a father, you know. And, uh, that's, uh, and, uh, yeah, he was quite... Uh, he, he knew what he wanted. <laughs> what was it? He knew what he wanted, and I think that was the same in his work. That uh, I think he was a he was a good uh, good head of departments in the hospitals he was working. I've heard very very much nice about him, and he was a Freemason, you know. I don't yeah. I suppose yeah, I know Freemason. He was very high degree, right? He was very high degree. Exactly. I think he was. Uh, I think he was the boss. I don't yeah. Know, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I don't, they don't call it the boss, but I don't uh, exactly remember what. Uh, so, so I think Korea and Freemasonry and his orthopedic uh, uh, work. Mm -hmm. And the children. <laughs> I mean, and the family. Uh -huh. uh, they were all, I mean, he had many, many feet to uh, stand on and, uh, and uh, was well known in uh, all, uh, all the circles, mm -hmm. I think. I met so many people who know about him.
You're proud of him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yourself also work for the Norwegian, Norwegian government and, and politics here, right? Yes, I was an active politician at, at one time. One yeah. time. So what yeah. did you do? Tell me about it, please. Oof. Tell me, please. <laughs> yeah, I was um, part of the Labour Party in uh, Norway. Can you, can you explain about the political parties here in Norway? Just mainly well, how many parties and what do they do? Oh, there are so many small parties, so I don't remember. Major, all. major. But yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the what we call here, right? The right party, um, a, a left <laughs> party, and uh, and the Labour Party, of course. And uh, then you now you know other parties coming up like um, uh, environmental, uh, environmental, environmental uh, mm -hmm. parties. Yeah. So let's say there are six, seven, eight parties that are big enough really to count. Mm -hmm. And it has been the right party and Labour Party that have been the two big parties. And uh -huh. they have the governments and everything. But now, I mean, you have various um, people coming up uh, now. But at my time, this was in the 1970 until middle of... Uh, 1990, because then I moved. From, I lived in a in an area in a community right south of Oslo, but a much smaller one. So there I was a local politician, and uh, for one period from 1984 to 88, I was the mayor of that of that little community. Then we had the local elections, and the other other side uh, won the elections. <laughs> so, so that was. Uh, but uh, at that time also, I was asked to uh, go come as um, state secretary in um, in the ministry of uh, local government. Yes, exactly. So I was there for just one and a half years. That that's. Uh, mainly my political uh, experience and because when I moved from uh, from this place to uh, to Oslo in uh, 1993 I thought I'd had I'd had my 20 years in politics that was good enough then I started having grandchildren you know and uh, had a work that was yeah I'm not to do and things but you were physical therapist yes, right? right before mm -hmm. yes. how how did you involve in politics why well, I mean, yeah, people um, people have their uh, education and they do involve in politics anyway. And so uh, I was interested. Why? What did you want it to do, achieve? Wow. A better life. <laughs> no, not exactly, you know, but uh, I mean, the, the, isn't that what all politicians want? They want to have good surroundings, schools for the children, kindergartens, yeah. Healthy, health, uh, healthy environments, everything. Yeah. So I mean, I just found that the Labour Party was the best party for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm quite sure that the other parties could say the same. <laughs> that, <laughs> that they are the best for for someone. Mm -hmm. Norway seems to be really blessed with the beautiful nature, the fear that I saw in Bale Strand. Yes. Midal, and this is beautiful country, and also you have a blast with the oil, right? Yes, yes. of course, that was, uh, yeah, that was good for the country, mm -hmm. for the economy. So now, uh, well, what will happen next, it's hard to say, tell. Yeah. <laughs> and also, it's the country of Viking. You are the one used to make the best ship in the world, right? Well. But uh, now, Korea is a bit now big, more than 50% of the Norwegian order of mm, the ship mm, is to Korea. Mm, mm, we didn't yeah. know how to make a ship. You didn't know? You didn't, we didn't know the modern forms of, you know, if I tell you that f the Korea is now one of the largest shipbuilding yes, country in the yes, world, yes, I think so. but the first one, the very large oil carrier made by the Koreans, mm. Because it's so big, mm. it has to be built by two and then put together at the last process. Mm. 
It's a very large oil carrier. We didn't know how to build it, so we learned from Scottish and okay. Japanese. And finally put together, and do you know what happened? No. It didn't fit. <laughs> Two parts has to be yes. making it, one, right? Uh -huh. It didn't fit. Uh -huh. That's how we started in 1970s. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's the uh, largest. Yeah. Yeah. I know so that. did the Viking Norwegians so are ordering ships <laughs> from Korea. <laughs> yes, they are. Mm. We need to talk about this. Yeah. But I, I mean, I never really think about Norway as the Viking country. <laughs> <laughs> that's more. That's more touristy. <laughs> it is, I, think. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Lucy, thank you so much for <laughs> what you've been doing for this whole series of interviews for the special occasion of 70th anniversary version of the special website. And um, this is how we want to remember and this mm. is how we mm. want to honor all those people who worked mm. at Normesh. Mm. On behalf of Korean Nation, I want to thank you and thank <laughs> your father and all other veterans here. And I want to recognize and thank the Korean Embassy and Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs of Republic of Korea. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. <laughs>